Well, praise the Lord. Here we are once again, another Friday night, and you know what that means. The two, fr- the second and the third Friday of every month, we have uh, training. We have, uh, uh, I hate to use the word guest speakers. That seems so secular to me. Uh, we have a brother. You know, this is another night where the Lord has shown us how much larger our family tree is. And I praise God for that each and every time that the door opens and he introduces a new brother in the Lord to us. That's our family that just keeps growing and growing. Uh, For those of you that don't know me, my name is Steve and I am the doorman for the Lord's round table and the door is open and I'd like to welcome everyone in whether you're coming in through the Lord's round table conference line or whether you're coming in via the internet radio and if you'd like to be a participant in this evening's uh, service and you're listening by radio y'all all you need to do is hang up dial 712-770-4845 it'll then ask for an access code and that's 863-397, and then the pound sign. I'll repeat that again because I didn't give you a warning that you're going to have to write it down. That's 712-770-4845, access code 863-397, and then the pound sign. Well, I'm excited. Our brother that is with us uh, tonight. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Just so excited. I've been excited uh, for days now. It's uh, Brother Egal. And, uh, and you know what? I'm just going to turn it over to him right now because there's nothing that I could say that will even put out the excitement that I have here tonight. So, Brother, with that being said, you have our utmost attention, and uh, it is all yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear Steve, and thank you, dear listeners, brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be to you. My name is Igal German, and I'm a Jewish believer in Jesus Christ, or his Hebrew name is Yeshua HaMashiach. It's a great privilege for me to join you and to share from Scripture. May the Lord bless our time tonight. A little bit about myself. As I told, I'm a Jewish believer in Jesus Christ. I lived in Israel for many years, and that's where I uh, trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where I became a believer. I lived in different parts of the land of Israel, and uh, the Lord brought me to the knowledge of his grace and his love by the revelation of his written word, the scriptures, the Holy Bible, the writings of the Old Testament, known to us as the Hebrew scriptures, and the New Testament. Uh, I speak the Hebrew language, I I read in Hebrew, and it's a great privilege for me to uh, share from scripture and to serve the Lord together with you. And thank you so much, Steve, for your kind introduction. Uh, so in this uh, uh, tonight, friends, I would like to share with you about uh, about God's essence as revealed to us on the pages of the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. In Hebrew, the book of Genesis is known as the book of Bereshit. Bereshit, and this is the first word used in Genesis 1.1. And if you will, let me read the Hebrew text for you first, and then I will translate. Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aret. Or the English translation, for example, according to the ESV, is this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We see, dear friends, that Genesis 1.1 introduces us to the reality of the one who is the source of our life. He is the origin of our life, the Almighty One. And we are introduced here to the first divine name of God. The name of God is Elohim. Interestingly, the name Elohim has the root El. 
and it's the singular form of Elohim. So we know that in Biblical Hebrew, there are at least three words that use the same root, Ein Lamed, standing for Mighty One. So in Genesis 1-1, the Lord reveals himself to the ancient people of Israel and to us, the readers of the Bible, as the mighty God. We find that the word Elohim that is used in Genesis 1-1 reveals to us that God is one, and yet the Bible teaches us very clearly that God is a compound unity. And here we have a very important tip that we can use for evangelism and apologetics. If you meet people who do not believe that God is one, that he's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, open up the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And what you're going to see there will just blow your mind. Genesis 1, 1 reveals to us that there is one true living God. He is the sole creator of the heavens and earth. The Hebrew word for heavens is Shamayim, and the word for earth is Aret. The Lord reveals to us in this verse that he is the one who created the entire universe. According to Colossians chapter 1, he is the one who created the world that we see with our own eyes and the unseen world, the unseen realm. If you turn uh, to, the, um, to, to Paul's letter uh, to the Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, we are going to see something very, very um, important. And an important truth is being revealed to us uh, in Colossians chapter 1. So let me uh, turn to this, to this letter of Paul, and let's read what we find in chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse 15. And this passage speaks about the preeminence of Christ, the Lord, the Son of God, who is the second person of the Godhead. Let's read what, uh, let's see and read this passage, Colossians chapter 1, beginning at verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And just a second, uh, he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that is everything he might be preeminent. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Lord. So we see your friends that. The one who created the entire world is our God, and he is one, and at the same time, he's triune. So the Bible teaches us very clearly, even based on the first verse of Genesis 1-1, that God is a compound unity. When we just read the passage from Colossians chapter 1, we saw that the Son of God is also the one who created the world together with the Holy Spirit. So we see that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one true living God, the God of Israel, Eloe Israel in Hebrew. He is the source of life. He is the source of life. And in him alone, we can trust and find refuge. So that's what we see in Genesis 1.1. Interestingly, dear friends, when you continue to the second verse, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. What will we see there? So let, let me read the Hebrew text of Genesis 1, 2. Ve'aretz ha'ita tohu vavohu ve'choshech al p'nei tehom ve'ruach Elohim merachefet al p'nei amayim. Genesis 1, 2 introduces us to the third person of the triune God of the Bible. 
This is the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Father, the Spirit of Christ. In Hebrew, this is Ruach, which stands for the word Spirit, and Elohim. And Elohim, and this, this is the same word that we just saw in the first verse, Elohim, God in the plural. So we see, dear friends, that Genesis 1, 1, 2 gives to us a glimpse into eternity, into the, into the Lord, the Creator who gave us life, light, and revealing to us the truth of the Bible, one of the most important biblical doctrines that God is. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Before we continue, I would like to ask uh, my dear friend Steve. Steve, do you have any questions, any comments, or maybe one of our listeners would like to jump and, and share something or ask a question or make a comment? Oh, no, I'm following along with you and highlighting as you go. And, <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just absorbing this all in right now. All right. Praise you to the Lord. And that. Do we, um, do we have any listeners that have maybe have questions or, or, or are they able to call in? Yes, there are some that, uh, you know, have the ability to jump in when they want. Okay, okay. Do, do you see anyone who, in, who would like to, to ask a question or to make a comment? Well, see, my board won't show me that. It'll just show those that are on here. And then when they... Uh, when they want to jump in, they will. Oh, Christina, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I just said I'm trying to listen intensely, um, trying to understand everything. All right. Excellent. Hi, Christine. Welcome. Hi. Thanks. Nice to hear you from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you have any questions or comments, feel free. Okay, I will. Thank you. Yes, you're I very welcome. I don't have any at the moment. All right, excellent, excellent. So um, it means that I can proceed, right? Yes, sir. I, yeah. All right, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, dear friends, now we will continue. We're still in Genesis chapter 1. We're still in the same passage, and we want to see what are some of the other key verses in this chapter that reveal to us the essence of the God of the Bible, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So if we turn in the same chapter, chapter 1, and we look, for example, at verse 26, verse 26. I can read the Hebrew text for you as well. Vayomer Elohim naase Adam bet Salmenu kidmutenu va yirdu vidgat hayam uv ova shamaim uva beema uv chol haaret uv chol haremes haromes al haaret. Genesis 1:26 reads as follows: That God said, "Let us make man in our image, after our likeness." And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heaven and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. Praise be to God. So now we are, friends, on the sixth day of creation. Genesis 1, verse 26 leads us to the creation of humankind. God created the first human couple, male and female. We know that the name of the male was Adam. The name of the female that would be later given by Adam is Eve. Hebrew is knock, Adam. Knock, knock. Yes, Hello. yes. <laughs> uh, I do have a question. Um, since God made Adam and he made Eve, uh, since he made them in their image, uh, are there, uh, where did he get the idea about how to make a woman besides from the rib, but the looks and everything else? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, I understand. Yeah. So you have a question or it's more like a comment, Christine? Oh. Uh, I was just wondering where did he get the idea? Are there any women 
besides him in heaven with Jesus and the Holy Spirit? Oh, I see, I see. Mm, it's a very good question. It's a very good question. So uh, in Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, we have the creation narrative. So Genesis chapter 1 is, uh, is the first narrative. Genesis chapter 2 zooms in on the creation of the first human couple. So according to Genesis chapter 2, we read that God uh, makes the following proclamation, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Then the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him helper fit for him. So the Hebrew word that stands for a help, helper fit for him is Ezer Kenegdo. Ezer Kenegdo. And interestingly, this term means I will make a fitting helper for him. So God saw that there would be no fitting helper among the animals. So no animal would fit a male, a man created in God's image and his likeness. For yeah. this reason, God decides to create a woman out of the man yeah. in order for him to make the following great proclamation that we find in verse 23. This, at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of men. So a man in Hebrew is ish. And when God created the, this helper for the man, she's called isha. Isha. So you see, we have here a, a, a plain word, ish and isha, almost the same sound. Mm -hmm. So the idea here is that God created a helper to fit him accordingly. So the woman was created just like the man, according to God's image and likeness. Uh, and let me share with you another idea, Kristen. Uh, yeah. According to Scripture, according to Scripture, we don't. I, I personally, I don't see any indication that in the in the unseen world, in the kingdom of God. Uh, we we have genders. We have gender. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think in the scriptures, right? We we know that God Himself is genderless. He's not a male nor female, right? Although the Bible does speak about God in terms of a father and even a mother, so it's still in scriptures. However, we should be careful and not to impose on God any uh, any gender because He is genderless. He is an eternal spirit who created the entire world, the unseen world and the seen world. Okay. That sounds, sounds uh, I think I understand what you were saying. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you're very welcome. Thank you so much for your question. Uh, do you have any other questions or comments? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Christina. Oh, no, no, I'm done. <laughs> okay. When he when uh, when it says uh, that he created them in his image, in his image, what are they referring to? His character? Um, I don't understand that because I thought that you know God is a spirit, so therefore does he actually have a distinctive image? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a very good question. It's a very good question. Thank you so much. Um, First of all, in Genesis chapters 1 and 2, we don't have uh, a, a theological elaboration on the image and likeness of God. So only when we go to other biblical passages, we see that the terms image and likeness in Hebrew, Dmut and Tselem, they are used uh, in most cases interchangeably. So they are used in different texts. For example, if we turn to Genesis chapter 5, Genesis chapter five. Uh, we can uh, we can we can look at verses one and two. Genesis chapter five, verses one and two. Uh, this is the book of the generations of Adam. When God created man, He made him in the likeness of God. Male and female, He created them, and He blessed them and named them men when they were created. So interestingly, that the word that is used here in verse 2 is Adam, man, with capital M, 
And this term is applied to both male and female. So in mm -hmm. scriptures, we don't have one verse that gives us the exact precise definition of Genesis 1.26 or 5.12, what it actually meant that God created man according to his likeness or, and his image. We don't have a text like this in Scripture. And for, for, uh, therefore, throughout the centuries, Jewish and Christian theologians and biblical scholars have come to different conclusions. What the Bible actually means when it refers to, to us being created in God's image and likeness. I did a study on this, and my conclusion is that we are created to reflect God's essence. We are created to reflect His love, His goodness, His kindness. So once we turn in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, God is giving us a new heart and a new spirit. We are being transformed into the likeness of the Son. And there are several passages in the New Testament where Paul speaks about us being transformed into the likeness of God. Is, is that helpful, Steve? Yes, yes. I'm I'm sitting here uh, wrapping my mind around that. It is. It's very helpful, you know, because I've always I've always wondered that, you know, and being in his character, so or in his image. So basically, as you say, we we're a reflection of what God is. So in in essence, so it would be uh, in, in in his. Um, oh, I'm trying to search him for a word in who he is, you know, and what he is. Am I correct in that? You know, as you said, he, yeah, he's, yes, he's in yes. love and, uh -huh. and compassion. Right. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's that that answers my question. Now, does it mean that we also have a spirit? Yes. So when the Bible refers to God, he is the eternal spirit. He is Father and Holy Spirit. So God is, is, God is one and he's triune. We are created to reflect his essence. So we as humans, we have body, soul, and spirit. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, you're very welcome. And if you want to, to know the exact reference in the New Testament, uh, I can give it to you, Christine. Uh, uh, I have if, to if, find a pen and paper. <laughs> ah, okay. Excellent, excellent. Uh, if you turn to First Thessalonians, uh, first, first, first Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-three. Uh, it's it's Paul's second letter to the church in in uh, Thessaloniki. So, if you turn to chapter one, First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-three, Paul concludes his letter with final instruction and benediction. And in verse twenty-three, he proclaims. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. You are very welcome. So according to 1 Thessalonians 5.23, we see that God is the God of peace. If Paul would have written this text in Hebrew, he would say the God of Shalom, El Shalom. So when the Jewish people, they greet each other in Israel, they say Shalom, right? And that's, and that's the word that Jesus would use when he was on earth with his disciples. Do you remember Jesus telling his disciples, peace be to you? Do you remember? Yes. And in, yes. in Hebrew, he would actually say Shalom Lachem, peace be to you. So that's the message of peace, because God is the one who reconciles us with himself through the cross of Calvary, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed on our behalf. Uh, can you tell me the word again uh, that says, peace be with you? Uh, shalom lachem in Hebrew. Uh, in English? Uh, I mean, uh, um, shalom. Shalom lachem. 
שלום לכם. לכם. Yeah, and, and לכם means to you. Peace be to you. Okay, that's all I needed. Wonderful. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. You're very welcome, Christine and dear Steve, and, and all other listeners who are there. We see, dear friends, that God created us so that we have a spirit, right? The Hebrew word for spirit is ruach. Ruach is spirit. <laughs> Then okay. it refers to the soul, and soul is, is another spiritual uh, component of our uh, internal being. So the spirit and the soul, they are within us. And we have all bodies, physical bodies, right? So spirit is ruach, soul is nefesh, nefesh is a soul, and the word for a body is goof, goof, okay? So those are the Hebrew equivalent that would stand for the Greek word that Paul would use here in his letter to the church in the city of Thessaloniki. So we see that Just as God is one, is triune, is one, is three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the same way we are created to reflect God's essence, we have a body, we have a soul, and a spirit. So we see that all of us, male and female, we are equal in God's eyes. God so loved the world. that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but inherit eternal life. So that's the proclamation of the gospel, whoever. That's why Paul proclaimed in his letter to the Galatians, in the New Testament, if you turn to Galatians, chapter 3, Paul makes the following great statement of faith. Galatians chapter 3, let's see what we read in this text. 4, verse Galatians 3.26, For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God, through faith, for as many of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah! It means, dear friends, that God loves us so much that he baptizes all of us into the Lord Jesus Christ, the second person of the Godhead. In Hebrew, Jesus Christ is Yeshua HaMashiach. This is his Hebrew name. And all of us, Jewish believers and Gentile believers, we are one body. We are one in him, in the God of the Bible, in the God of Israel. And it, and it means that there is no male and female in Christ. What a great blessing. What a great blessing. Okay. What a relaxation that is nowadays. Exactly. That's true, Christine. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Steve, Christine, or others, any questions or comments? You know, um, I do have one more question. Uh, uh, I do not know. Uh, anyway, the question is, Uh, from the translation of the Greek and the Hebrew, which one is uh, the best translation that is, has been made from uh, Greek and, and Hebrew in the Bible? Okay. It's, it's a very good question. There are many good translations. Um, I prefer... Uh, pardon me? Which one is the first or the, the most that is correct translated from it. Mm, I see. So if you're referring to English translations of the Bible, yes, uh, yes. Uh, I, I believe that we have uh, many good translations, uh, including the following. For example, the ESV, the English Standard Version, is a good translation. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have the King James Bible, is a very good one. Uh, New King James Bible. Then we have the New American Standard Bible. So we have those four that I, I would say that are very good, They're very literal in their translation of the biblical text. Thank you. Yes, you're very welcome. If, if you want me to repeat, I can repeat those translations. If, no, if you want. that's fine. I just needed to hear it from you, that's all. 
Uh huh. All right. All right. Excellent. Excellent. And and of course, if you have uh, if you have uh, the the opportunity to go and and read the Hebrew text or the Greek text, is this is the best. Uh, or sometimes you can even use an interlinear Bible. So you you can go even online and find interlinear Bible where you have the Greek text or the Hebrew text and. Mm-hmm. Beneath each word, you can see the exact translation. Wonderful. I just needed to hear from somebody that, you know, that's all. Yes, of course, of course. You're more than welcome. Uh, Steve, um, are there any other listeners who want to jump in? You know, you're going to, you, you'll see that with truck drivers, there are a lot of listeners. <laughs> All right, excellent. Would you, li- would you like me to continue tonight, friends? Oh, yes, without a doubt. All right, oh. all right. Excellent. So I can share some other interesting thoughts from God's Word with you. So we saw that in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, this one true living God, this Elohim, speaks in plural language. Have you noticed that? So if you look at verse 26 and 27, God says, Let us make men in our image and our, after our likeness. And then verse 27 says, And God created man in his image. What do you think? When you read this verse that God creates, uh, that God proclaims, Let us make men, how should we handle it? How should we interpret it? You know what? Jesus and the Holy Spirit made them. Yeah, exactly. Right, Christine. Good for you. I agree with you. Steve? Would yes. you like to say something? Well, I was going to say the same thing Christina did. You know, it's just a triune God. You know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy right. Ghost. Yeah. You know, but... Uh, exactly. Amen. Exactly. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And, and, and when you... Uh, refer to our biblical text, for example, the one that which we just read, Colossians chapter 1, it speaks about the Son of God creating the world, right? Correct. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, we saw that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, was hovering over the waters, Genesis 1, 2. So we already see here the Lord, the one true living God, as the one who created the world. And Genesis chapter 1, dear friends, is a great passage to go when you encounter people who deny the divinity of Jesus Christ, who deny the divinity of the Holy Spirit. You can always open and and tell them, okay, let's open Genesis chapter 1. What do we see in Genesis chapter 1? Oh, Genesis chapter 1 alludes to us, first of all, that God is Elohim, it's plural, and it refers to God's compound unity. Then when you read the text, you see that we have here the Holy Spirit in verse 2. Then God says, let us make men. Isn't that amazing? That Genesis chapter 1 is one of the greatest go-to passages for evangelism and apologetics. You want to talk to your Jewish friend about God's essence. You want to show him that God is not just God the Father. You go to Genesis chapter 1. You encounter people from different religious groups like the Mormons or the JWs or other groups who deny the biblical teaching about God's triunity. Genesis chapter 1 is a great passage. You go, you open, you read it, even in your English Bible, very clear. And when you can add some comments from the Hebrew language, the ones that I already mentioned, it, it, will, it, 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 it will make your argument even stronger. And then you can have the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit, Ephesians chapter 6. As in the sword of the Spirit, you can win the spiritual war and win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. 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 Mm-hmm. And, then, um, and then if we continue... For example, to Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, we see that 
when the Lord God made earth and heaven. In our English Bibles, the name of the Lord, Lord, ha is in capital letters. Do you see it in your Bibles, uh, Stephen, Christine, and others? Yes, you know, yes. It's in capital letters. L-O-R-D. Do you know why it's in capital letters? Because he's the Almighty. It, this is true, but we have a different reason. Oh. The reason is that whenever you have Lord for capital letters in our English Bibles, it, it always stands for the sacred name of the Lord, the Tetragrammaton, the name of Yahweh. Hmm. So that's what you see when you open any verse in the Bible and you see L-O-R-D, four capital uh, um, letters, you know, it's not just Lord in the sense of a master or the almighty one, but it stands for the Hebrew name that the Jewish people are not allowed to pronounce, which is the name of yod Hey vav Hey, the Tetragrammaton. Most likely the name should be, should be pronounced as Yahweh, but it, it's not, it should not be pronounced as Jehovah. It's not the right pronunciation. It's wrong. It has no foundation in the Bible. It's very important for us to know, friends, that the name of God, the most, the most um, likely form in which in, uh, how it was pronounced by the ancient people of Israel, that's how I pronounce it already, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's not the modern form. Because in Hebrew, friends, you don't have the letter J. It does not exist. We have the first letter of the Tetragrammaton, the most sacred name of God is Yod. The second is He. The third is Vav. And the fourth is He. So it's Yod, He, Vav, He. It is the most sacred name of the, of the God of the Bible. And this is the first time it appears in Scripture. It's here. It's in Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. That's confusing. <laughs> uh, Steve, uh, if, if, if you'd like me to, to explain or your question, I would love to address it. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I was having a hard time grabbing a hold of that, what you were actually saying. You know, I was with Christina that, you know, when it's like uh, when they're talking about God and say you're using the word he, it's always capitalized and, you know, and, and with Lord, you know, all being capitalized. But, you know, now that you're pointing that out, you know, usually it's the first letter that was capitalized. But here the whole word is capitalized. Is that the, is that exactly. that's the significant yes. difference yes. right there? Right, right. Excellent, Steve. Right. It's a very good comment that you just made. Because... You read the Bible, you see the name Lord, and you think, oh, yes, it refers to the Lord. But when you see the name Lord, four capital letters, it always stands for the sacred name of God in the Hebrew original text. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. <laughs> that's amazing. You know, because yes, when you read yes, that, you, when you, yeah, when you read it, you just, you just skim right over it. You know, you don't stop and, yes, and, and yes. look at it like that. That's amazing. Right, right, exactly, exactly. So this is the first time in the Bible that the name of the Lord is used here. yod hey vav hey the Tetragrammaton. That's Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. And then if we continue in the same chapter see that uh, the name of the Lord is used many more times. It's yod heh vav -Hey, it's the name of Yahweh. Uh, and then, interestingly, if we go on to Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 4, Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, we are going to discover something amazing and just mind-blowing. What do we see in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1? Let's, let's, let's read it. Now the man knew his wife Eve, who is the man, that's Adam, the first male that God created. His, his wife is Eve, or Hava. And she conceived and bore Cain, saying, 
I have gained a male child with the help of the Lord. What do you see in verse 1? Do you see the Lord, four capital letters yep. in your Bible? <laughs> yeah, jumped right out. Exactly. And Christine, do you see the same thing there? I can't. <laughs> I don't have my Bible with me. It's packed in boxes ah. somewhere. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But even if you open it later on, you'll see that the name of the Lord has four capital letters, L-O-R-D. It will jump out next time I see it. I guarantee you that. Yeah. So here you can see that the name here that stands is the name again, the Tetrach Rabbiton, the holy name of the God of the Bible. So Genesis 4 1 is very unique. Why? Because this is the first time that a human being pronounces the tetragrammaton. So the one who is pronouncing the tetragrammaton here is who? This is Eve. After the fall, after Genesis chapter 3, the first human couple is expelled from the Garden of Eden. They are punished for their disobedience. So Genesis 4.1 is the continuation of Genesis chapter 3. So we see that in Genesis chapter 4, Eve conceives and she gives birth to the firstborn son, Cain, or in Hebrew, Cain. And it's saying, I have gained a male child with the help of the Lord. So the first person, the first human being, to pronounce the, the name of the Lord on earth is the woman. Eve, she is the one. Not even the man, but the woman. And interestingly, we'll see that Genesis chapter 4 ends with the same theological motif. If you look at Genesis chapter 4, verse 26, what do we see here? That Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named his name Seth, or Sheth, meaning God has provided me with another offspring to, in the place of Abel, for Cain had killed him. And to Seth, in turn, a son was born, and he named him Enosh. It was then that the men began to invoke the Lord by name. So in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, we were introduced to Eve. She was the first person, the first human being who actually proclaims the name of the Lord. But then something happens by the end of Genesis chapter 4, verse 26. Now it's not just the man pronounce, uh, sorry, not just the male, a uh, female pronouncing the name of the Lord, Eve, but rather all humanity. It was then that the man began to invoke the Lord by name. And again, you, you see here, Lord, four capital letters, L-O-R-D, which stands for the Tetragrammaton. That's so amazing. Those are amazing <laughs> truths. That's amazing. From yeah. Scripture, Yes, yes, uh, please go ahead. No, no, I was just saying that, you know, that's amazing. I mean, uh, you know, that, that's, there's so many things that, that, we, that we just skim across that we don't know because we don't have that type of uh, education in it. We don't, we don't seek it out like that. And, and uh, you know, to see that, and now I'm seeing it in different places as well. Uh, where they, uh, you know, use the name of the Lord like that, even in uh, verse 4. And it said he had respect unto Abel and to his, uh, or it says, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. And again, uh, you know, the name was used there as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly, right, right, right. So what we see every time the, the name is used is always a reference to the one true living God of the Bible, the one true living God of Israel. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Many Christians believe that they kind of worship a, some, time, some type of a different God, the God of the New Testament. But it's wrong. 
all Bible-believing Christians worship the one true living God, and he's the God of Old Testament, and he's the God of the Old Testament, and he's the God of the New Testament. He's the one true living God from Genesis to Revelation. So we cannot speak about different God in the two Testaments. It's the Amen. one true living God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Not three gods, but one God, just like we read in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4. Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4, is a great proclamation of Israel's faith. What do we read there in Hebrew? Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. He is the God of Israel. He is the God of the entire world. And the revelation of the Lord draws us to, to him so that we know that who is your God? What kind of God do you worship? And we know that we worship the one true living God, the creator of the world, the God of the Bible, who is real to us throughout all the pages of the Holy Scriptures. It is so great that you can explain it into detail so beautifully. Um, I never even thought of trying to understand or actually not not understanding what we have learned here. So uh, I do appreciate what, the way you're explaining it. I appreciate it a lot. Oh, you're so welcome, Christine. All praise be to God. All praise be to God. I'm so glad that I can share something with you, dear friends, dear brothers and sisters, all the listeners around the world. And uh, I would be very glad to continue our uh, our sessions, God willing, maybe hopefully next week, Steve. Yes. Would that be okay? Oh, without a doubt. That's what, you know, it's funny you should say that because I was just sitting here thinking, you know, before the end of this, we need to invite you back again next Friday, without a doubt. Oh, thank you so much. Thank gonna, you. We're actually going to learn something. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> that's, that's a great blessing. Thank you so much, dear friends. It's such a, a wonderful opportunity to uh, to share what the Lord has to tell us right from the biblical text. It's, it's, it's amazing. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Well, we thank you for coming on, and I would like you, before we end this evening, to tell all of our listeners about your webpage. Hang oh, on, let me get you. a pen and paper. Don't oh. slow down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you so much, Steve. Yes, I'm very glad to share about my ministry. Okay. Let's just say first, Christine. I'm ready, whatever. Okay, excellent. So, uh, Christine, Steve, and all, all dear friends who are listening to us. Um, I am the founder of an online Bible study ministry, and it's entitled Yesod Bible Center. Yesod Bible Center. I, I can spell it for you. It's Y E. What? Uh, y E S O D. Yesod Bible Center. Y E. Okay, do yes, so Y-E-S-H? No, no, Christine, it's Y-E-S-O-D, Bible. Y-E-S-O-D, Bible? Center. Bible Center. Bible, oh, okay. Okay, uh... Y E S O D Bible Center. Yes, exactly. Okay, so I think I got it. Then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So this is a, a ministry that the Lord led uh, led uh, myself and my wife to launch about uh, two years ago, and it's a it's a ministry uh, with an emphasis on Bible study, evangelism, and apologetics from a Messianic Jewish perspective. 
Mm. So you are more than welcome to check it out. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go, uh, if you visit the website, you go to the home page. Yeah. And you can subscribe to a newsletter as mm -hmm. well as you will find videos, resources, articles. And I wanted to make an announcement for all of the, for all the listeners. Uh, right now, the Assault Bible Center offers two new online Bible courses to begin next month. Hmm. Wow. And, and those are online courses, live interactive, beginning February 9th. So one course is entitled The Hebrew Names of God. And this course runs for 10 sessions for 10 weeks on Sunday evening. On the website, you will find all the information and you will find all the details how you can register mm -hmm. for the course. Uh, the second course that, uh, that is being offered is entitled Genesis Apologetics. So this is a very unique course in which I'm going to guide you through the book of Genesis and focus on some of the most interesting topics like creation, mm -hmm. redemption, sin, curse, mm. Uh, women in the book of Genesis, archaeology, history pertaining to the book of Genesis. We'll touch on a variety of topics which would, we would, which would help you to be better equipped in your evangelism and apologetics. So two courses, the Hebrew Names of God and Genesis Apologetics, offered via Yesod Bible Center. The Hebrew word Yesod means foundation. Oh, okay. I was wondering I what that was. <laughs> you know, when I was reading that, I'm, I'm sitting there going, I knew, you know, I see yes, and I'm like, what's the other part of it? But now that you said that, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's excellent, excellent. Dear Fred, so I look forward to hearing from you. You will find all the contact information right on the website, email, phone number. So please feel free to contact me. And uh, I hope to see you in the classroom, God willing, soon next month. Well, I was on your I'll page. See what I can do. Hmm? Yeah, I was on your page and I was looking, and there's, there's a few I, I would definitely like to take. There's no doubt about it. So you will see me on there. Yeah, I see what I can do. I only do it by phone, so until further notice, I'm gonna have to see what I can do, how I can manage it. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. And and dear friend, um, all the lectures are going to be recorded, and those are live lectures. They are being recorded, and if if in case you miss a lecture, live lecture. You're going to get a video link right into your inbox by email. Nice. nice. Well, well, I have to see what I can do. I cannot guarantee nothing with my phone, but I'm definitely going to try it out and check it out and see what I can do. Excellent, definitely. excellent. Wonderful. So please check out the website of Yesod Bible Center. And share the word with your friends, your colleagues, and your churches. Amen. Okay. Amen. So, brother, we're set. You're coming back next Friday, correct? Yes. yes. God, God willing. God willing. Uh, Amen. Steve, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Would, um, would you mind closing with a word of prayer? Oh, yes. That's, that's uh, mandatory on uh, the Lord's round table. <laughs> That's mandatory. So praise the Lord. Well, Father God, Lord, we just thank you for this evening. We thank you, Father, for your presence. We thank you, Father, for the opportunities that you have given us. We thank you, Father, for this ministry where you open the doors to bring uh, brothers in uh, to teach us 
Lord, you say that your children perish due to lack of wisdom and, Lord, or lack of knowledge. And, and Lord God, we, we need this because it shows us more of who you are. And that's what it's all about is knowing who you are as our Father. And, and Lord, I just praise you for that. I thank you for my brother. I thank you for his wife as well, Lord, as they're putting the, as you have birthed this ministry with them. And, and Lord, that they're expounding on it in the way that they are, that we can come in and to learn more. And, uh, you know, your word says to, to, uh, to, to study the word and, and know what it's all about. And, and Father, I think of the verse that says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And Father, as we study your Word, we study you, and we learn more about you. I praise you for that, Lord. And, I, and again, I thank you for my brother and, and uh, my sisters. And Father God, I pray uh, for my brother's family, that your hedge of protection be around him, as well as all the drivers that are out here running up and down the highways tonight, some of them in some pretty adverse weather conditions. Keep them safe, Lord, mm -hmm. and get them back to their homes safely. Return them to their families, Father. And, Father, I pray for those that in our families, and not if there is, but we know that there is, for those in our family that are lost and without Jesus. I pray, Father, that they feel that drawing of your Holy Spirit upon them, Lord. I pray, Father, that you bring them to that point, that place, Lord, where they know that they need a change, that, and that only changes is through Jesus Christ. That's where their ground zero begins, and we praise you for that, Lord. We praise you that you did send your Son, that we have that opportunity to call upon the name of Jesus and to know that we then become your children. And, Father, for, for just for that, we, oh, we praise you, Lord. We praise you. So, Father God, again, I thank you for each and every one that's been here this evening. I pray, Father, that they receive what I received. And, Lord God, we're going to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And we're going to pray this in the blessing, the holy name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you, Christine. And uh, thank you, all your friends who are out there who are listening to us. May the Lord bless you. Have a blessed and restful Shabbat. May the Lord be with you and grant you his shalom, his peace, and may he be with you and your family. So I'm looking forward to sharing some more great time with you next week. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. Well, good night, everybody. Good night, and uh, we look Thank forward to uh, yep, we look forward to being with each and every one of you again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good night. Good God night. Bless you Good all. night. Thank God bless you all too. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.